guys, today I am very excited to share with you the recipe for my gluten-free croissants. These amazing buttery pastries have been in the making for over a year and just look at those layers. I cannot wait for you to try them. The first thing you want to do when you make this recipe is to activate your yeast. Now to do this I'm going to warm up some milk and then I'm going to stir in some sugar until it's dissolved. I'm then going to add in some dried yeast and there is a list in the blog post in the caption of all the yeast that are gluten free in the UK. Now I'm going to give it a good stir and then I'm going to pop a tea towel over it and put it in a warm spot. And this is for the yeast to activate and hopefully when it's ready you'll have a nice frothy head on that yeast. So while that's activating, I'm going to add my gluten-free flour to a bowl. And I'm also going to add some xanthan gum, a pinch of salt, and the rest of the caster sugar. Now, I tend to use the gluten-free bread flour that you can buy here in the UK, but this will work with a plain or all-purpose blend. Once you've given that a really good stir, you want to break in chunks of your cold, unsalted butter. Now, it's important in this recipe that everything you use is as cold as possible. And as you'll see as we go along, there is a lot of chilling involved, but that's really important to make sure we get those beautiful layers. Now, I'm just using my hands to rub this together, a bit like when you make a pastry. And as you can see, it looks a little bit like breadcrumbs. Now look at the froth on that yeast. This is after about five minutes, it's ready, so I'm pouring it into the flour mix and I'm gonna start stirring it with a wooden spoon. Now you'll see that the mix starts to come together quite quickly and it gets a bit claggy and when it's difficult to use a spoon, get in there with your hands and give it a good squish. Now you wanna move this around and mold it together until it just comes away from the sides of the bowl nicely like this and you've got this kind of smooth, malleable dough. And so the next thing we're gonna do is chill it. Now to do this, I wrap it in a bit of cling film and pop it in the fridge, but first I'm just gonna push it into a bit of a rectangular shape. Now, this is really important to just make sure that when we actually make the dough, we've got a nice rectangle shape from the start so that we don't have too much wastage. So I'm just using my hands to shape this, then I'm gonna wrap it up, put it in the fridge while we make the next part, which is the butter packet. And that's what's gonna get us all those lovely layers is folding together the dough and the butter repeatedly. So to do this, it's really simple. I'm popping some gluten-free flour on a sheet of baking paper, and then I'm putting a block of butter in the middle. Now, you can do this with just the block, but I like to cut it in half because it just makes it a bit easier to flatten it out. Put a little bit more extra gluten-free flour on top, and then cover it with another sheet of baking paper. And then I'm gonna use my rolling pin to basically flatten this out to it's about six millimeters, which is about a quarter of an inch thick. Now I tend to start this by pressing the dough with the rolling pin because it just makes it a bit easier and then you can start to roll it out as it gets thinner. As you can see it does start to form a bit of an odd shape and I want it to be a rectangle so I'm using the dough scraper to neaten up the sides and when you get any odd bits like this where you can't seem to neaten it up you can just cut off a bit of the excess butter and squish it back into place and then use the rolling pin to roll it back into that lovely rectangle. Once you've done this, peel away the top layer of baking paper and then fold over the bottom sheet so that it's wrapped up in a nice little parcel, which, you guessed it, we're going to put in the fridge to chill. So once the dough and the butter have chilled, we want them to be chilled so that they're firm, but you can still move them like this. We don't want them to be too soft and we want them to be the same softness so that one doesn't break or break through the other. So first thing I'm gonna do is roll out the dough. Now we want this to again be about a quarter of an inch thick. So I'm gonna place it on some floured cling film and then I'm gonna put some more flour on top and another sheet of cling film. Working with gluten-free stuff can be quite sticky and we don't wanna to add too much flour to the mix, which is why I use cling film. It just makes it a lot easier to handle the dough. So again, I'm using the same method of pressing it out with a rolling pin, and then I'm gonna roll it into a rectangle, which is about 30 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Again, I'm using the dough scraper to just neaten up the edges, because if we can get this rectangle nice and neat from the start, it's just gonna make it so much easier as we go along. Once you've rolled it out to the same thickness as the butter, we're then gonna pop the butter packet to one side of the dough. Now you can see here, it leaves about a third of the dough with no butter on it. And we wanna have a small border around the edge so that the dough can seal the butter in. So once that's in place, we're then gonna fold over the piece of dough which has no butter on it. We want about a third of the dough folded back over the butter. And then I'm gonna use a pastry brush to brush off any excess flour. And then what I'm gonna do is take the remaining piece and using the cling film to guide it, push that back over the top. So you can see we've got this kind of letter fold. That's our first fold. 
See, it's not that difficult. And then that's ready to go back in the fridge to chill. Now once this dough has chilled, it's time for our next fold. Now this is basically the premise of making croissants. Roll it out, fold it, chill it, repeat. I pop this down on my flour cling film and turn it a quarter turn and then I'm just going to roll it one way. This is really important because we want to make sure that we don't lose the layers and this is how we're going to build them up. So once I've rolled this out to about a quarter of an inch again, neatening up the sides a little bit, I'm then going to do exactly the same thing, folding it over, brushing off the excess flour and then folding over the other part. And as you can see, it's actually not that difficult. So I'm going to brush off the excess flour, but you may see that somewhere on the edges you get these tiny little cracks. Now that's okay. What we're going to do is just press in a tiny little bit of flour and then brush off any excess and that will just stop any butter that's showing through from leaking out the edges. And finally, I'm going to use a knife to mark the end that was furthest away from me. This is because I'm going to wrap it up and chill it and then I can put it down in exactly the same position so that I can then give it a quarter turn. And again, repeat the same process. So we're going to roll it out and then going to fold it up again. And we do this two more times until the dough has been folded. Lots of times we will have lots of layers and it's time to make the croissants. Now definitely do not skip the chilling process. I know it can seem a bit tedious to do, but it's so important because if you don't chill this dough properly, all the butter is going to melt and leak out and you'll lose all the layers you spent all this time trying to build. So once the dough has had its final chill and turn, it's time to start shaping the croissant. Much the same way, we're gonna pop this between two sheets of cling film with flour on, and then I'm gonna roll it out into a rectangle. Now I want this to be, again, about a quarter of an inch thick, and I wanna keep the edges as neat as possible because I am gonna to have to trim the edges this time, and I don't want to lose too much of the dough because it's not like a pastry where you can just squish it back together and re-roll it because you've built up all those layers. So once I've got this nice and thin, I'm then going to neaten up the edges using a ruler and a knife or a pizza cutter also works really well here. So those curly edges have got to go because they're just not going to fit. And you can roll them up into some wonky croissants if you don't want to waste it. And then I've just got a bit of minimal dough that I need to trim off the edges to neaten it up. Now once we've done this, we want to cut it into six triangles. Now I do recommend that you only start doing this with six croissants at first because it is a lot of work and you want to make sure you've got the technique right before you try and make loads of them. So the first thing is to divide the dough into three and then divide each rectangle in half into a triangle. Now at this point, if you find that your dough has got quite sticky from where you've been handling it or if it's a hot day, you can really carefully lift the cling film onto a chopping board or tray and pop it back in the fridge just so it chills nicely before you have to handle it to roll it up. And you can also use a dough scraper to help you just carefully get the croissant dough off of the cling film. And then as you can see with each triangle, I'm just going to roll it really loosely from the long end up to the short end. And then I'm going to pop that little rolled up croissant onto a baking tray which has been lined with baking paper. Now we just want to repeat this with all of them. Don't worry if you get any little cracks, it's fine. It won't affect the finished croissant. And also if you want to make the croissant slightly bigger, you can actually roll this dough a little bit more once you've got the triangles. It's completely up to you. So once I've got my six croissants on my tray like this, I put it with the small edge of the roll on top so that it's not pressed down. I'm then going to cover them with some oil cling film. Make sure you don't wrap it too tight. It's just enough to keep it warm and keep any drafts out. Then I'm going to cover this with a tea towel and pop it in a warm place. Now, as you can see, after the proving time, they haven't doubled in size like a bread would, but they have gotten a little bit bigger and nice and puffy. And sometimes you can see the layers in the cut edges. Now we want to make sure they don't get too hot because if they do, the butter is going to leak out. And once they've had the proving time, you need to put them in the fridge for at least an hour to make sure it's nice and cold before you preheat the oven. Ideally, you can leave them overnight at this point and then cook them fresh the next morning. But when you're ready and the oven's hot, take them out and brush them with some egg wash. This is going to make sure they go lovely and golden. And then it's time to bake them for 20 minutes. And as you can see, they are going to go lovely and gorgeous, and flaky and golden like this. Look at those croissants. See how they've puffed up a bit more in the oven. They've got the layers. They've got the flaky top. They're honestly just the best gluten-free croissants ever and really not that difficult to make. 
And these truly are a labour of love. They are more complicated than some of my other bakes, but trust me, they are worth it. There's a full recipe in the description down below with a link to my blog, which has loads of written tips as well as photos to guide you. Let me know if you try these. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll be back with more recipes again very soon.